Hi, I'm George Cox for Acton TV. I am very excited to introduce our new reporter and co-host, Robin Kinney. So tell us what's coming up on the show. Okay, thank you, George. Um, this week we have Ben Bramley, who's a young man who's a really great diver, and he actually wants to go to the Olympics, so that's exciting. And then we had the Acton Police did a youth academy with a canine visitor. And we also have an update from the town manager. So, a lot going on. There's a lot going on. And plus, we have the Life Care Center event with Jamie Aldridge. All on this edition of... Talk of the Town. Stay tuned. The Acton Police Department held its Acton Police Youth Academy. Here are some highlights from their canine demonstration. We are the Acton Youth Police Academy. I'm here with Mike. Mike, uh, can you tell me what we're doing here today? Uh, today we have a uh, canine demonstration. We have Officer Belt here from Groton PD. And uh, we have a police youth academy that we're hosting this week for ages 12 to 14, the junior high gap. And um, he's just about to show um, canine Lola to uh, our students. Okay. And how do the kids sign up for this? Are they their parents find the camp? How do you kind of advertise this? Well, we um, we advertise it first with some of the students in the school, but primarily it's ran um, through the rec department. So if you went to the rec department website, um, you would see that uh, we had a flyer there that people could sign up for, and then you know we'd be able to get them to the camp. And do you know Lola personally? This is the first time meeting her, and uh, I'm so used to having the patrol canine aspect dogs, where you, the ones that you see uh, typically on TV with the loud bark and the German Shepherd style. Uh, this is the first one I've seen with the Black Lab. It's very docile. We can actually pat her. It's her first canine that I've actually been able to hug. Uh, so it's, it's interesting, but her role is to search, so uh, to find missing kids, to find elderly that have wandered off. Uh, I think it's a wonderful asset. And, Obviously, if we ever need it now, I can contact Rotten and use them as a resource. Okay, and now do you have to be careful around all of the other kinds of dogs, like the German Shepherds? Are they all kind of, you know, beware? Yeah, the typical um, canine that you would see on the street now um, are those what we call patrol dogs, which their main function is to uh, stop the threat, which would be to... Um, you know, if someone was running away from a scene, if there was a criminal activity, if we were trying to clear a facility or a building, or if we saw that someone had broken into, or even if an officer was in a struggle and, and the dog was released, those dogs are trained to bite to stop the attacker. Um, so, yes, I would never go near a canine. When we had our canine here in town, it was a wonderful dog named Miso, uh, who had recently has passed. Um, and we wouldn't even go near the cruiser because he would basically be trying to jump out of the car. Uh, they don't really distinguish between uh, police officers, kids, or civilians. They just are trained, and once they get released, they stop who's ever in front of them. I'm here with Luke. Luke, what's your role in today's activities? Uh, De Detective Campbell and Arachler are with me. They've uh, done a great program. They've set this youth academy up through the schools. It really... Uh, gives the children an insight on what we do on a regular basis. We go over fingerprints, we go over crime scenes, we go over accident scenes. Today we're doing a canine demonstration with the assistance of Groton Police. Yesterday we had the state police air wing in. So it really just, it gives the youth an idea of what we do on a regular basis. And we actually give them a hands-on experience and to see if they would have an interest in law enforcement experience. And even if they don't, it really just gives them a great idea of what we actually do on a regular basis. So now we are here with Keith. Keith, what is your goal today? Well, uh, we, we put this uh, Youth Academy together so we could uh, give some kids who wanted some uh, insight into what we do as police officers a chance to come out and see it in person and, and, and uh, get some hands-on experience. So I think the kids are getting a good, uh, a good experience this week. Um, we've had uh, some defensive tactics. We've worked on handcuffing, we've worked on car stops, that kind of thing, um, you know, speed enforcement. Just so they're getting a well-rounded uh, view of what we do here at the Acton Police Department. Awesome, and is this just one camp or is there more than one camp? Tell us about the program. So we just started, this is our initial uh, year, so um, 
we're learning as we go here ourselves, so we're going to see what works as, as we go through this. I think the kids are having a great time and they're learning a lot, so um, you know, I think in the future we'll be doing it again. Okay, and this is your first year, so what was the motivation? Like, how did this all get started? Well, I think as SROs, you know, in the summertime, there there is some downtime, and we said, what can we do to bring, you know, some kids in and, uh, you know, uh, get to know them a little bit better so that when the school year starts, we have some, some friendly faces at the school. So uh, we put the we put a proposal together for the chief. He said, yeah, let's do it, and, and here we are. So. And you met Lola today for the first time, too. What are, what are your thoughts about Lola here? Well, if she needs a home after this, uh, she can come live with me anytime. Okay. Feel. All right. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. I'm here today with Officer Nick Belts, and he has a friend with him as well. Who do you have with you today? I have uh, my canine partner, Lola. And what is Lola's specialty? I know she's a work dog, so tell me a little bit of what she does. Sure. Lola's a police work dog, and she's a uh, very friendly black lab. And uh, her specialty is uh, finding missing people, and then uh, as well as articles and narcotics. And how long have you had Lola? Uh, I got Lola uh, when she was about a year and a half, and we've been on the road together for uh, a little over six and a half years now. Wow. And what is her, like, personality? I mean, easy to get along with? Oh, yeah. If you've ever met her, you, you know that she's super easy to get along with. She's very mellow, uh, and her specialty is finding uh, missing kids and uh, the elderly population with Alzheimer's and dementia and stuff like that. Um, and she does great with that because she's a non-biting dog. Uh, so when we get to the end and find the, those missing children and stuff, uh, it's great because she's all food reward and she expects to be fed instead of bite. <laughs> oh, that's great. So there is a big difference, just so the public knows, between a Lola and some of the other police dogs, correct? Correct. Uh, when you say police canine, you usually think of the German Shepherds with the big pointy ears and the big teeth and the big bark and stuff. Uh, Lola, a black lab, very docile, easy going, uh, but has a great work ethic and uh, does a super job. Okay, well, she seems pretty special. I like her. <laughs> Thanks so much. I like her too. <laughs> Thank you. In addition to the canine demonstration, the Acton Police Youth Academy had a chance to visit Nara Park for a water rescue demonstration hosted by District Attorney's Office, Marion Ryan. Here is the Acton Fire Chief, Robert Hart, to tell you more. So I'm Acton Fire Chief Robert Hart. We're here today with District Attorney Marion Ryan to uh, simulate a, uh, a drowning victim for as part of her summer safety program. So we're going to talk about water safety and uh, the fire department's going to put on a demonstration on rescuing a victim out of the water. So we're here at Nara Park in Acton. The recreation department has uh, is graciously donated the time for us today and we'll be talking about summer safety, mainly water safety. So today is just really a reminder to folks, especially in light of what we've seen in the last few weeks, there's been a number of tragic incidents at the beach. And given how hot and humid it's been, we know people, especially these weekends, are gonna be heading out to the water. We want people to have a wonderful time at the water and really be thinking about how to be safe and prevent any of these tragic incidents. Middlesex County, we're very, very lucky. Across the county, we have 136 ponds and lakes and 22 rivers and streams, including some of the big ones that everybody knows about, the Merrimack River, the Charles River, the Concord River, and Walden Pond. And those waterways offer folks and their families an opportunity to just have so much fun during the summer. And what we want to avoid is the terrible situation where that fun at the beach turns into a tragedy in an accident that could have been and should have been prevented. The state police detectives assigned to my office, along with the local police and fire departments, respond anytime there is some kind of a tragedy on the water. We have unfortunately had one such tragedy this year in Middlesex County, but already in this summer across Massachusetts, we have had at least 11 drownings. Those could have been, should have been, so now we're going to fold into a rescue demonstration that the fire department's going to put on. It's going to take place out behind me to, the to my left. 
and the fire personnel will will be working with a lifeguard who's going to simulate a drowning victim. So it's really important to remember this is a simulation, right? We have all the things all lined up. Uh, you're going to see the fire trucks roll in with their red lights. So they're already kind of staged. So we bypass the 911 call. We bypass this, somebody here calling for help. We bypass all that stuff. So this is really controlled, but it's still going to take some time to, to make it happen. So kind of bear with us. You'll see our victim go out in the water, and then our apparatus will start to arrive. Stop. Unresponsive female, apparent cardiac arrest. Let's start CPR. 